Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter, and for the second week in a row, we're facing a team with six losses. This time, it's the Utah Utes, having a down year. Which is a shame, because I like their uniforms. They have really nice uniforms. And uh, yeah, they're nothing special, and we are even less special than we were last week, because <laughs> we almost lost to Oregon State. Yeah, they're led by Jacques Sutton. He's over a thousand yards already with six touchdowns. So they got a good running back at the very least. He's got decent speed. He's basically an all-arounder if I'm being honest. Nothing special anywhere, but he's got stuff in every place. So that's, that's something. And their starting quarterback, Darnell Jones, is actually questionable. Unsure if he will start. So he's he's got some good stuff. Almost a thousand yards. That's not as good as I thought it would be. Their backup quarterback is Darren Jenkins. He's, I mean, he's a backup quarterback, and there's a reason for that. He's got, he's got the ability to scramble, and he can also throw the ball as well. Welcome to Salt Lake City, Utah, where the Utah Utes prepare to host the Hobart Bay Ones. Utah is three and six on the year, looking to get that, well fourth win in the hopes of getting two more after that and becoming bowl eligible. Obviously Utah at 3-6 and six does not have impressive statistics, but Hobart Bay despite being number one has been less dominant than normal and last week almost lost to a 2-6 and six Oregon State at home. Took overtime and a two-point conversion at that to finally pull it out. Could Utah be the team to finally break through and beat Hobart Bay or will we finally return back to last year's form and actually start annihilating the smaller teams? Let's find out. Hobart Bay is set to get the ball first, and we have kickoff here in Rice Eccles Stadium. Jacoby Jackson will take this opening kickoff, and he takes it out. Cuts to the right, has a little bit of the sideline, and he's tackled about the 27-28. So first play for Hobart Bay coming out in that split formation. We do love it very much. Hand off to Tyree Nolan, finds a hole, sort of, picks up six yards. Good chunk play to start off the game. Now third down and three. Clock winding down, Glessner does get it out, looking, and he goes down for a sack. Only three plays in, and Utah already has a sack. Glessner is taking a lot more than I think we normally do. It could be because we have a younger line. But I don't know. That one's caught by Tolbert, and Utah gets a first down. So they're already doing better than we did. First down and 10. Play call here is going to be another pass. Darren Jenkins gets it out to Brooks, and he gets the first down. Good play. Darren Jenkins is the backup quarterback, by the way. Their starter is not in, out of injury. And now it's a, oh no, it's a play action. Darren Jenkins finds Lacey, has a first down, and then some. Breaks a tackle and pushed out around the 10-yard line. What a play by Mike Lacey. Did not expect that. Now second down and goal, high formation. Play action again. Darren Jenkins, the lefty, has Lacey. Mike Lacey cannot get there. Good stop, good stop. Now third down and goal, still in that I formation. There's one receiver to the right. It's a handoff to Sutton, and he fights through for the touchdown. Jaquise Sutton. We highlighted him, and now he's making his presence felt. What a great play. And Utah, in their opening drive, takes a 7-0 lead. Second down and 10 now for Obar Bay. Lesnar takes another sack. Second one this quarter. Joey Lewis got this one. Third down and long. I imagine we're just going to chuck it up to someone as everyone's going deep here. He bombs it deep and that is caught by Bentley Zwiebel. And he will get chased down eventually, but 63 yards. A massive catch and run. What a play. Second down and nine now out of the eye. Toss left. Nolan doesn't really get many blocks. He loses three yards. And that happens. That happens sometimes. And as a running back, you got to hate it because there's nothing you can do. Third down and 12. Glessner over the middle. Caught by Zwiebel again. He is the man keeping this drive alive. My goodness. First down and 10. Glessner, no play action. Just a straight throw. He's got Zwiebel again this time for eight more. 
I guess he's the only guy we know how to go to. That is the end of the first quarter, and the Utah Utes lead 7 to nothing. Hopefully we can cap off this drive with a touchdown. It's third down and one. Hand off to Tyree Nolan. He just gets enough for that first down. The business run, as I like to call them. Now second down and goal. All the receivers on the right side. It's a keeper on the option for Glessner, and he gets into the end zone. Hobart Bay scores, and they are going to tie this game up. A good second drive after the first one was more or less a disaster. That said, we looked on the brink of just giving them the ball back in great field position. Third down and 18 inside our own five or something like that. We drive down and score thanks mostly to the efforts of Bentley Zwiebel. And now Jaquise Sutton is doing the exact same for Utah. He is down at midfield as these Utes are not slowing down on offense. First down and 10. They seem to like the eye formation and I can't blame them. If you have a good run game, why not? Jenkins does a backwards pass to Sutton and makes him lose six yards. Again, as a running back, you, you've got to hate that because you're left all alone to face those guys way behind the line of scrimmage. Now Darren Jenkins decides to run into a pile and fall down for a loss of four. Great job, Darren. Great job. Carl Reynolds, I guess, gets the credit for the sack. I don't know why he gets the credit. Third down and 20. Darren Jenkins just looking for someone. He's got Tolbert. He stopped eventually, but a good gain of 16. At the very least, they'll manage to put us back. Oh, they kicked the touchback. Okay, so first down and 10 at the 20. Hand off to Tyree Nolan. Hits a hole, and he eventually gets 7 yards. Again, a good chunk play. It's not flashy, but it works. Second down and 3 now. Trips left. It's going to be a throw. Glessner gets it out to Tyree Nolan on the screen. Got the block, and he's chased down by the lineman. He just got a little bit more headway. Probably could have outrun him. Now Glessner is rolling out, looking for someone. He chucks that one, and it's intercepted by Walker. He looked like he stepped out of bounds, but they didn't call it. And then he's pushed out of bounds at around 30. Well, that sucks. Bobar Bay went from a chance to take the lead to giving them the ball back. Yeah, that's not good. Second down and 10 now for Utah. Darren Jenkins, a draw play to Jaquise Sutton. Breaks a tackle. First down and more. Eventually taken down at the 15. He probably could have gotten the touchdown if he'd gone right instead of left. Oh, well. Gives us another chance. First down and 10. Play action this time. Darren Jenkins is sacked. Loss of 8. That's what we need. Thank you, Dane Burns, for coming through. Second down and 18. Play action this time. Darren Jenkins to the right. Caught by Bennett. Touchdown, Utah. From a sack to a touchdown. Let that be a lesson to both teams today. Do not, do not sack them for a loss of eight. Because when we got sacked, the next play we got a 63-yard catch. And when they got sacked, the next play they got a touchdown. So there's your lesson. Do not sack someone for a loss of eight yards. All right, we get the ball back down seven, under two minutes to play. This is plenty of time, though. Lesnar looking for someone. He's rolling out. He could take it himself, and he does. Plenty of green space. Cuts to the right and takes a hit. Please just slide down next time. It'd be extra bad if you, I don't know, fumbled the ball. Now looking, Brett Stone is in the game, and he's got Bentley Zwiebel. Very fortunate that middle linebacker was not looking. Could have been picked otherwise. Stone is still in the game. He's going to continue to throw. And he's got Joe to Joe in. And what a window. I mean, that was chaos on that side. But somehow they found a way. Now Glessner's back in the game. More split, more passes. He will fire to the right. Caught by McIntosh on the right sideline again. First down and 10, 24 seconds left, by the way, 24 seconds. We're gonna continue to throw it, and he's got Joanna, and he's in for the touchdown. The right side of the field was easy pickings on this drive. Good way for Hobart Bay to end the second quarter, hoping that they don't, you know, blow it and give Utah some massive touchdown at the end of the half. I assume they wouldn't, but you honestly never know. Unfortunate as that is.
Anyway, so we don't. We don't actually allow that. And at halftime, the Utah Utes have made this a tie game at 14 apiece. All right, well, Utah has been doing basically what everyone else has done this year. I would say that I was surprised, but honestly, I wasn't. I'm not surprised by what's going on. Hobart Bay has just not been the same team this year as they have been in past years. Had so many close games, even to bad teams, especially with last week against Oregon State, and this just seems to confirm that. For some reason, we're just not coming through like we used to. Utah gets the ball with a chance to take the lead here in the third quarter. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Jaquise Sutton getting the blocks on the edge. One man to beat. He does not beat him. Oh, wait, yes, he does, but he gets tackled eventually. Drake Scott came from behind, took him out to prevent the touchdown. Now first down, Utah again. Four wide receivers in the pattern. It's a handoff to Jaquise Sutton again. He's not tripped up by his ankles, but he tripped over a different guy. That is an interesting way to go down. Not by behind, which is what normally happens, but from the front. That's new. Darren Jenkins has Mosley over the middle, and they get another first down around the 25-yard line. The Utes, sparing no expense. They're giving it their all. They want to be the team that finally, finally beats Hobart Bay. And now Darren Jenkins, he has all the room in the world. Jacoby Jackson eventually just annihilates him. But that's still a good run for Utah, as they are looking to score here. Yeah, it's a handoff to, to Jaquise Sutton, and Nelson tripped him up. He tripped him up so that he could not get to the first down marker. Third down and in inches, a chance to hold them perhaps to just a field goal. It's a handoff to Sutton. Oh, that's a first down, and that's a touchdown. Easily, no one was there for Jaquise Sutton. My goodness. Utah will take the lead once again. Hobart Bay still has not led this game. First and ten, Glessner looking to throw. He will get it out. Oh, that's Gordon Jenkins. Unfortunately, he's not the fastest, and he gets chased down eventually. Man, you know if that's a wide receiver like JoJo McIntosh, he's gone. Either way, first down and ten. It's a keep from Glessner. Please don't pitch it back. You don't have the man there. He picks up a first down. That's a generous spot, I would say. But hey, we will take it. Now third down and ten. No progress made after that play. We're obviously going to throw. Glessner got over the middle. Bentley Zwiebel into the 20-yard line. Red zone. Here we come. 124 yards already for that man on the day. First down and ten. Looking to throw. Glessner to the left this time. Caught by Zwiebel. And he's short by a yard. Oh, come on, refs. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. He deserves it right now. We're going to continue to throw Glessner over the middle. Caught by Bentley Zwiebel. There's the touchdown he deserves. After all he's done, he earned that one. More than anyone, he earned that one. My goodness. What a player. I'm telling you guys. This guy is a superstar in the making. Remember, he's only a redshirt freshman. Now Utah, well, let's see if we can actually stop them this time. Darren Jenkins, he will run with it himself. Jacoby Jackson tried to tackle him and failed. Eventually he's pushed out of bounds. Utah, high formation again. Looking for something. Now I say something, that something is a run to Jaquise Sutton. He is chased down and thrown out of bounds. Surprising, Drake Scott got in there. Now third down and one. Can we get the stop this time? I'm guessing no, but I'm a pessimist. Darren Jenkins looking for something. He is caught by Sutton out of bounds. So a terrible throw by Jenkins and we get the ball back. Can we please not turn the ball over this time? That's the key. Lesnar to the left, caught by Joseph Jacobson with room to run and he is chased down at the 31 yard line. Now Jacobson's getting into the action. This is quite astounding. Come on, guys. We are in field goal range. We're at least there. Play action now. Lesnar over to the left. Caught by Jacobson again. A tight window, and he comes down with it. That's what we recruited him for. He uses size to get the balls where no one else can get them. Hand off to John Gordon. Room to run, and he's in for the touchdown. Another freshman getting a touchdown. And we finally take the lead. 
our first lead of the game. At the end of the third quarter, we lead by a touchdown. Can Utah tie it up and perhaps go for that upset? Fourth quarter begins with Utah with a third down and nine. They need to score here. They kind of do. It's a draw play to Sutton. He did a hurdle to get over a man, but won't do him good in the end. Drake Scott. Celebrating there, now first down and 10 for us. We have great field position. A chance to make it a two-score game? That'd be phenomenal. That one is caught by Joseph Jacobson. Can he get there? No. He's a possession guy, not a speed guy. That was McIntosh. He was gone. Or a Zwiebel for that matter. Or probably anyone else on the receiver roster. Second down and goal. Glessner got Jacobson, and they give him the touchdown late. A late call, but they give it to him. We... We'll take those. I won't say that we love those because it kind of feels dirty when they give us such a late call. But hey, again, we take it. 14 point lead and it's a handoff to Sutton and he loses a yard. Great play calling Utah, just great play calling. Hey, remember that time when you could throw the ball wherever you wanted? Maybe try that? Third down and nine, now they're throwing the ball and it's Jenkins trying to find someone and he goes down on the sack. That one by Saw Sage, his first sack, his first tackle of the day. And that is going to be a new record for Saw Sage, the most career sacks from any Hobart Bay one. Going to number 95. 32 on his career, beating Spencer Johnson. We appreciate all that Saw Sage has done, and he is not done yet. We still got games to play. So we get the ball back. We actually get the ball back. A chance to kill the clock and win this game. Lesnar will, oh he tried to pitch it out and it's picked up by Russell. And he's tackled immediately by Tyree Nolan. Good presence of mind by the running back, but gives Utah a chance. We had a chance to put them away and now they have a chance to get back in it. Second down to five, it's a play action. And that one is caught by Tolbert. Tackled around the 27 yard line. What will Utah do? I mean, they got to throw. I don't imagine they'd run. Let's play action again, and he's going to run off with it. Darren Jenkins has room. Not really. Game seven. Okay, that's respectable. High formation. It's going to be a play action, right? No, it's just a drop back. That one's backwards to Sutton, and he breaks Jacoby Jackson's tackle. He would have broken another if he hadn't gone out of bounds. First down, now second down and nine for Utah. Still in the eye formation. It's a fullback run to Mike Lacey. It looked like he may have gotten pulled down by the face mask, but no call. Now third down and three. Utah, you're going to be looking for the end zone here. Jenkins has Stewart, and he's in for the touchdown. Great play by Garen Stewart. I think it's Garen, not Jaron. Yeah, I assume so. It's hard to say. It's honestly hard to say. Yes, Utah brings it back within a score with 2.20 left and they have all three timeouts. They're very much not out of this one and they're going to kick it deep. Uh, I mean, I guess that sort of makes sense. I mean, if you fail the onside, we're automatically in field goal range because of Spielberg, but even so, this is a risky move by Utah. Especially since their defense hasn't done the greatest job at stopping us this half. We got the one turnover, but that was more of an error on our part as Tyree Nolan has room to run. One man to beat, sort of, he beat that guy, not the next guy. Even so, we're into Spielberg field goal range. See, Utah should have just done an onside. Third down and three now, Utah trying to get the stop. Hand off to Nolan, he does not get there. The defensive tackle came through. Utah calls their final timeout. I'm gonna send on Spielberg for the field goal. This is what Utah is trying to avoid. But it's through the uprights, and we lead by 10 points. Kyrie Nolan celebrating with some guys there. So now Utah, one minute for 10 points. Let's see if they can get it. It's not impossible, and Jenkins goes down immediately. Well, that's not how you start it off. Fourth down and 13, their dreams might already be dead. Jenkins will... Look, he's going to run with it? Oh, no. Oh, he got the first down. How did he do that? What a move by Darren Jenkins. I did not expect that. First down and 10, Utah. Go ahead. That was, that was a well-deserved first down. Now he's over the middle. Caught by Brooks. Tackled almost immediately. About the 27, 28-yard line. 
under 30 seconds left. They used over half their time already. Jenkins looking for someone. Oh, he's going to want to go deep. He's going for the end zone. Wide open for Palmer. No one was covering him. And Utah is going to bring this one within three points. The Utes just need a field goal. They get the onside. They could actually tie this one. Heck, with a good play like that, they might even take the lead. But first, they need the onside. Here we go. Can they pull a Baylor? The answer is... Uh, no. Jacoby Jackson eventually picked it up. Uh, we were trying to give ourselves a heart attack, but we didn't. And that will end the game once again. Hobart Bay wins a nail biter. This one less so than normal, but still looks like for a moment there, they might actually get the ball back. Thank goodness they didn't. Best game by Glessner in a while, I would say. One turnover, though for some reason they're not showing it on the stats. It's weird. Oh well. Great play. Great game. Utah, you have my respect. You're a much better team than your record would indicate. Or maybe not. Maybe we're just a worse team than our record would indicate. I don't know. But we won by three points. Three points. My goodness. We have so much room to improve. It's not even funny. It is, but it isn't. And, yeah. So, <laughs> another week, another heart attack for our older fans. Wonder how many they can take. And once again, we will highlight this nail-biter of a game in the post-game show where we go over the stats. Alright, well, Glessner, he went 15 for 19 today. 301 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, only took two sacks. Brett Stone also went two for two, 31 yards. Today was just such a nice, refreshing day for the pass game. On the ground, 87 yards for Tyree Nolan. Still not back at his Heisman form. Glessner, 30 yards. John Gordon, 11. Both of those last two with touchdowns. On the receiving end, though, Bentley Zwiebel. 143 yards. He got a touchdown, and he deserves it. Jacobson, not bad either. 107 yards and a touchdown. And don't forget Joe to Joanna. He got a touchdown catch. Everyone else was sort of minimal, but helpful. On the defensive end, it was Jacoby Jackson with seven tackles, all of them solo. None of them for loss and no picks, though, however. Nathan Davidson get, did get two tackles for loss and a sack. So did Carl Reynolds and Dane Burns, as far as sacks are concerned. So did Sauce Age. A lot of guys getting sacks today. On the Utah end, Dominique Harrison and no one else. 11 tackles all solo. One of them for loss. It was not a sack, however. Now, for the Utah receiving game, no one stood out but 55 yards for Pete Tolbert, 40 for Mike Lacey, the fullback, and then the touchdowns by Robin Palmer, Dan Bennett, and Garen Stewart. Or is it Jerry? I think it's Garen. On the ground, 123 yards for Jaquise Sutton. Two touchdowns. It's a good thing we highlighted him. Darren Jenkins got 41 yards. Not bad for him. And then through the air, Darren Jenkins, not bad again. 17 for 22. 202 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks. Only problem was he took four sacks. So not a bad game. And then we beat them in three of the five categories. So that's there. And next week, we have Boise State in what is going to be a de facto division championship game. It's in Boise, Idaho, and I hope to see you there. But until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.